Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and welcome back to some Fallout 4. We are here inside Good Neighbor. We are here, of course, to talk to Dr. Amare and get something looked at in regards to the brain of Kellogg. So we can hopefully learn a little bit more about the Institute, maybe where it is, what's going on with it. Anything and all information that we could possibly drive from the brain is what we're going to try and do today inside the memory den. Apparently Nick Valentine is already going to be here. Apparently he's going to be here to introduce us to a Dr. Amare. And if I remember correctly, we're going to be going on some psychedelic trips inside the brain of Kellogg, which sounds absolutely fantastic. We get to learn a little bit more about Kellogg, about, you know, a little bit before, you know, uh, the Commonwealth kind of became what it is today, I suppose. Well, it just, it's kind of a cool sequence. Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about little old me. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt Mr. Valentine you old dog <laughs> he of course is uh he's a very old uh synth like one of the original not not original but like one of the first wave I only know what the expression would be but he's an older kind of synth you can definitely tell he is a synth he's clearly you know made of uh, robotics you know as compared to other synths which apparently look exactly like actual humans he's very old school in that respect Dr. but apparently Amari. everyone likes him yes I take it this isn't a social call. All right, extracting memories. Kellogg's brain. Let Nick explain. This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Hmm. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. She looks exhausted. Do you have it with you? The brain? Well, here we go. Here's what I could find. It's not even a brain. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's Looks the like hippocampus. Shrimp. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I thought it looked like a piece of shrimp. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. So is it good? Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is... The brain implant could fit him, but that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. Well, this work don't mess this up. Uh... You really think this will work, Nick? No idea, but we got a missing kid on the line. That's worth the risk. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. She has a vault tech um, logo right there, which I think is pretty interesting. Maybe she was an old vault tech doctor, or perhaps she just found it. Because um, it's like one of the few lab coats in this game. I, I don't know. Uh, is there a way to break this lock? Um, Tell me yeah. you have a way past this, Doc. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we used to? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. So the idea is we're going to each sit in a chair, and then they're going to use both of our cognitive brain power together, and somehow that's going to allow us to see through it? All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. 
Seems incredibly dangerous. On the other side. I'm just saying. Seems incredible. Are you going to put Kate down in one, too? Oh, no. He's going to get inside that one. Okay. All right, Kate. Uh, so we're going to get some brain surgery done here, I guess. Or Oh, cool. There's a television. <laughs> I think it'd be cool if randomly... That Please Stand By thing's been basically happening on like, all TVs in Fallout ever since the nukes drop. I think it'd be cool if, like, randomly, these LFL kids standing right there. Um, I think it'd be cool if the TV actually, like, randomly started, like, playing again. But it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Can you say how, like, trippy this is, walking through somebody's memories? This reminds me of the memories that we saw in the Far Harbor DLC, which I think was yeah. everybody's least you favorite part of that DLC. These memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Turn down the goddamn radio! I'm trying to sleep! Mm, what a this is really cool. So th th this is What's when the NCR mean? was, the You're NCR was founded. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them safe. Teacher at school said the NCR would bring back the good old days, like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop singing you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boots? Listen. Dad was either drunk. Or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. Listen to me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless, but you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will not. That's a good lesson to teach a boy. Good lesson. You have always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. Aww. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Oh man. One. Yeah, I see it over there. But actually, I wish I would have like pressed the button to like, because I'm sure like he had memory thing about his dad. He probably would have said stuff about his mom. And oh, here we go. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in in her way, and she protected me from dad. That cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. Damn. <laughs> it's basically playing this like on a loop here. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Damn. Poor Kellogg did not have a good childhood whatsoever, so he grew up out west. Um, towards, like, where they had, like, Fallout New Vegas and stuff like that, like, out there in that area, because that's where the, the NCR was founded, right? 
haven't even played through New Vegas yet. I really want to, though. Um, if I do, I think I'm going to do it off-camera. Um, I did, like, a, like eight episodes of a Let's Play, and then I stopped playing it because I got, like, busy with other stuff. Um, this was, like, I don't know, like, 2013 or something like that. Um, but I never actually got any further than that in Fallout New Vegas. And part of me, I just want to go back, just start over, and, like, just play through the game now that I've played through Fallout 4. Because Fallout 4 really got me into the Fallout series. Let's see what memories are going to be here. It looks like a crib. Maybe Kellogg's got a kid? It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah. You've gotta give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kinda green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know. He puts it into his thigh. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's no, okay. I got her. So it appeared Kellogg had a wife and a kid. Connect you to the next intact memory. Well, I guess we could move on, but Barbie also wants to hear more. I want to learn about the baby. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. Oh, why well, didn't tell me anything? I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. Well, all it's right, so, fine. wait, You'll that's the way I came. This is the way I'm gonna be going. So he had a wife, or at least a girlfriend, I don't even know, and a daughter, and you didn't really say much about the daughter. Whatever happened to the daughter. Did she die? Did she... Whatever. This looks like he's underground. Um, so yeah, I... I wonder what happened with, like, the, the wife died. That much was said. But she didn't really... Or he didn't really say anything about the daughter. So maybe it's just a... Maybe it's just a bit of a piece. Like, oh, yeah, daughter. You know, make him feel more like a human, I suppose. But, um... I don't think we learned anything more about the daughter. Which is a little disappointing. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. I found another memory to try. I'll connect it. So, did some outfit or some gang kill his family, his wife and daughter? Oh, no. Okay, well, that explains a little bit more about the daughter. I kind of like this little sequence, though, because it's not a bunch of puzzles. It's just kind of walking along and, you know, learning about stories. Okay, this is very clearly a bar, and it reminds me of that bar in New Vegas. Um, just by looking at it. It doesn't look like anything I've seen in Fallout 4, but we'll see. Mind if we sit down? Suit yourself. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job is done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? 
So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. <laughs> There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. I'm not even going to bother um, learning more about those people. Uh, maybe if I do, though. Maybe if I talk to the person, we can learn about the family that they killed. Gosh, now I want to know. Now I want to know the lore. I wish I could take these bottles. Wait, wait, I'm not playing on survival anymore, so I don't need to do that. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. There was always a job for someone like me. Didn't matter what it was. All right. Didn't matter who like, I was right. supposed to. What about bartender? I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. <laughs> Alright, so it really gives to learn anything there. I thought they were going to say something about the family in particular. Maybe it was going to be like an Easter egg throwback to like uh, Fallout New Vegas. Maybe it was. Uh, I, I don't know, but Mr. figured I'd Kellogg, try. I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. There we go. <laughs> Systems offline. Hmm, impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One All right. Has got to tell us something. So the institute is in We're fact real. We're oh. running out of brain here. Oh, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. These are the only memories he had. Like I, I think if this were like a real situation, which all this makes zero sense whatsoever, I understand that. But if this were like really going through someone's memories, wouldn't he have like a bunch of stupid filler memories like to go through rather than just like all these bullet points? Manual override initiated. Mm. Cryogenic stasis. Suspended. Vault computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just find it. Pod C6. Down the hall near the end. There's me. <laughs> my hair didn't look like that initially. There's my wife. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller, even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Yeah, buddy. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but uh, I never like to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of uh, her. Sarah, his wife. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but uh, I'm still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, she would have been with one. me the whole time. Here. At least, when we both eventually got thawed out, you know. We would have found the kid together. This is, of course, the se opening sequence of, like, the vault. 
is it over? <coughs> Are we okay? Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. Come no, here. No, wait. Baby. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you Sean! Mm -hmm. God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. I'm sure the kid's not deaf. Having a gunshot Please go off like two feet away from him. I think that's so cool. Like, we get to see this situation. Like, this is like one of the first like big moments of the game What's when you're in the vault and when you get I'm thawed out. Finished, I just need to confirm... Right here is where we get froze back up, although right. it shows us We're panicking. Here. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. That's still such a cool throwback, though. The first time I saw this, when I was initially, you know, playing through the game for the first time, I was like, that is just so cool. And this is the place in Diamond City. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. Oh boy. Piper has really done it this time. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to say she's right, but... Definitely a lot older than he was previously. Well, I guess, okay, I was waiting for something to happen, but I guess not. It wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. Mm -mm -mm. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Uh, Kellogg. It's okay. One of these days you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in, he's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. I love this song. Well, some heads are going to roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next but to I'm me. your father! Hold still. Okay. I'm over here! Well, technically on my memory, you can't even see me. Does Sean look different? Like, if I were a black guy, would Sean be black? If I were Asian, would he be Asian? Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. I think that's how it would work. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there. As soon as you're ready. Okay. Where do I go? Okay, one. Love the song. Two. I love the fact that uh, you access the TV again. And it's probably gonna... Is it gonna, like, start by zooming out from the TV, maybe? 
It's been, I, I've beaten the game before. I have done this before, but I think it'd be cool if that's how it worked. Is it? Huh? Huh? Oh, they should have like zoomed it out. They should have zoomed us in and zoomed us out. It would be so cool. I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? Uh. Am I okay? Are you seeing anything bad? Don't be alarmed, but I honestly don't know what to look for. As I said before, this is uncharted territory. But your neural and physiological readings have returned to normal. From a medical standpoint, you're fine. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? I suppose so. Virgil, Kellogg's life. It's weird seeing his life. I saw Kellogg's life. The man who ruined my family. The man I killed. That's right. He was a human being just like the rest of us. And he had reasons for being what he was. However cruel. How does that make you feel? I don't know. I don't forgive him. Does it make me hate him more? I... I'm not sure, Doctor. I don't know if there's any right way to feel. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> We're getting off track. The important thing is that we discovered the Institute's greatest secret. Teleportation. The only question is, what do we do now? Uh, sh Virgil? That scientist Kellogg was supposed to track down. Virgil, we need to find him. You're right. A rogue Institute scientist could answer all kinds of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That doesn't make sense. No one goes there. Not even if they were desperate. Uh, he's probably dead. Per then it'd be the perfect hiding spot if nobody goes there. Why? Why? Tell us about the glowing sea. What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating <laughs> radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. Be a perfect hiding spot. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation in the glowing sea like a shield or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. I will. I'll find a way to get through the rats. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way... I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Awesome. Well, I know how to get through there. It involves power armor. And can I take all this? Oh, I can. Cool. Awesome. Find Virgil in the glowing sea. Oh, look at all this stuff. All for me. Anything good over here? Probably not. So that was kind of a fun little thing. Actually, there's some good stuff over here. Perfect. Rob Co includes uh, oh, Hall Tape Game. Boo. Really? No, I'm not reading anything. Miss sits on the couch while I get, I don't know, I go into people's brains. But uh, yeah, so I think the idea is I wear power armor. Uh, question is, will Kate have power armor? Should I abandon my companion? Because I, I feel real bad <laughs> running through the glowing sea. If you guys will know, the glowing sea is all the way down yonder. This is our objective here. Um, I think it's where the nuke initially hit. Like, there's a big hole there. Maybe that's where the nuke landed. There's a ton of radiation over here if you guys have never been there before. Um, yeah, I guess you'll see that in the next episode. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to, like, fast travel up to um, Sanctuary, grab my power armor, and then fast travel, like, uh, down to the Mass Pike Interchange, and then we'll start the episode off, and we'll start, you know, making our way into the Glowing Sea. Um... I'm not sure if you can give your companions power armor or not. We will have to see. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys will enjoy the video. The memory den's not accepting new clients right now, sweetheart. 